I'm getting ready to leave Cindy's and I did a really bad job of documenting my time here. I think I was just wanted to not video or be on electronics, I just wanted to be. She's fanta was fantastic. We have a lot in common. She's a risk taker, very creative, extremely resilient a solution-based thinker. When she travels, she likes to look for just really unique, odd things, like things to eat or places to go, which is just like me. I think we'd be great travel partners. So it was nice, it was really nice staying longer. When you wake up in the morning, you're like, there's no way I would bike today. I'm exhausted. But yet when you're out on your trip, you get up, and you start to pedal, and like the first half hour, you're going, oh my gosh, how am I ever gonna pedal today? And then you slowly just blood starts pumping and your brain changes and, and you just go into a different zone. Packing up my bike and I can't wait till this process is over. It's the thing I hated the most about this whole trip. I think this is the only slice on my tire and that's the goop that came out, but I put putting the shoe goop over it because it's getting a little longer, but I think that's the only thing in this whole trip. I only got this idea, the guy online mentioned it. So it's just sort of like, even though the goop sealed it from the inside, the tubeless goop, this is just an extra measure to put over the top of it. Just went to pick up my Moose Trex bag and this came right off, came right out, like not even a, any effort. And what's interesting, this part of the bag was really loose on the bike. So you can see how the stitching does whoosh. and these are I mean you can look see and and I rested the bag into the triangle so the weight of this bag is resting really in here the fact that it has that much tearing it just tells me that I would never trust this bag and see how it just sat in here really loose this is how it always was it always just kind of sagged so that strap was just barely you know being used this one I have a little tight, and I don't know if it's super waterproof, even the tension on the zippers. So maybe that's why it's, what was it, $45? So I'm on a bus route this time. If I want to bail at any point, meaning if I get, if it's taking me too long to get to Boise because I have a flight I need to catch to Boston, I did confirm with the bus, you know, where do they put my bike? They put it underneath the, with the luggage and I'm like, what happens if I like pay and I'm there and it's full? And I knew they wouldn't have an answer for that. So there's really no guarantee and there's only one a day. It's noon, of course. I'm gonna go to a bike shop and ask them about a walking route. It's showing up on Google as a walking route if I should bike it. Well, the gentleman here really knew the ro roads. Eight to the three is really pretty, but it's really a lot of climbing. 95 is not as pretty, but it's easiest. It's a little rough, like the first, I think he said 30 miles, and then, it, then there's a wider shoulder. And that walking route that I saw, when I put in that I was walking to Craigmont, Idaho, he said that's like single track. Hmm, prettier, but more climbing. <laughs> I've seen a lot of pretty, I'll go with easy right now. All right, so time to start pedaling now that it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon. I think Craigmont is, it's either like 64 or 74 miles from here. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Back into the abyss of wheat, cars, and it looks like a pretty shady, what's it called again? The side part that I'm biking in. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that's over. I think it's over. You see this nice road behind me? Okay, that just happened six and a half miles from like, so you're in downtown QT. You get onto 95 and the road turns to total shit. That was really stressful. A lot of semis and the white line was even choppy, like cut up. The other thing that made it difficult to ride on the side, because sometimes even if it's kind of crappy, it's still hard. This is what this has, it's soft and it can be really deep. So, you know, I went on it once and I was like, whoa, okay, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> Look at this road. I'm on new tarmac. It's wide, there's a beautiful breeze out. It's overcast. Oh my gosh. This feels so nice. Look at these people, they have their own forest. 
I came from there and that would be continuing on 95. And I pulled over and I looked at my map and I found this little road. It shows that if I take this road, I will shave off nine miles from if I take, stay on 95. That's a lot. <laughs> I know the guy in the bike shop said there'd be a lot of climbing if I took one of the little roads. Some climbing or nine miles. I feel safe enough and fit enough. I just wanna see it. Let's try this. How bad can it be when you get to skip nine miles? Oh, I lost my pavement, so that kind of sucks. But it's so intimate and beautiful. This reminds me of being in southern Utah, and instead of seeing rock, I'm seeing wheat. We're gonna drop down into that. Oh, look at this. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. It turned to dirt, which is nice actually. So it's quiet when you pedal. Nobody's around. And I have to say I'm so happy it's overcast because I would be baking right now. This is so special. I'm gonna share it with you. I strapped you on. Let's go for a little ride. Handheld may be better. Would you say hay? I don't know. Hay and wheat are the same thing. I should know this. Should I? Should I know it? This is going to be pretty steep and pretty awesome. Just wanted to show you before I go. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Once again, living on instinct. Oh my gosh, it always comes through for me. It always comes through for me. That was so gorgeous, it was so different. And boy, can I notice the temperature change? It was so weird to be up high in like wheat hay fields. I don't know what the difference is, by the way. I sound like an idiot and I'm not good. I don't have strong Wi-Fi, so I could Google it and cheat and come across as like I know what I'm talking about, but I'd rather just you guys know that I don't know. <laughs> To be up high, like whenever I've seen it, it's always been like in flat, um, flat, low elevation, flat, flat, flat. And here I am, I'm up high, and it was so quiet and still, and, and I got lucky because I didn't have the sun on me. The sun is just peeking through now, but I had overgas the whole way. But I am so glad I dumped off 95. Well, the road that I turned off on on 95 was Shirod, it's S-H-I-R-R-O-D. And then when I started to curve down the mountain, uh, it turned into Coyote Grade. We are entering Lapwai, Lord of the Butterflies. Interesting town, as they all are in their own way, but this one is particularly interesting. Maybe because it has the silos. That's definitely one thing that's pretty different. It's looking deserted. Let's go in there and get a cold, sparkly drink. Remove your hoodies before entering the store. I don't know what that is all about, but anyway. The Indian reservation. Usually they're pretty run down. I just spoke to a guy outside the supermarket when well, he came to speak to me and he said, Google is showing me to take the Gulch dirt road. It's kind of the same distance as this, the freeway. But he said, you know, it can be a little shady. You don't know who's back in there and it's already like going on five. And he said, and then I don't know where you're gonna sleep. Winchester at the top of a climb, there's a little campground. And then if I go down to Winchester Lake, there's a campground there. Since this is very sketchy, and I say that just because people were trying to talk to me outside the supermarket, like not this guy, just some other people. You know, he's right, I'll just stay on 95. I'm not gonna make it to Craigmont. So this kind gentleman just picked me up right before the climb, which is way ahead. He pulled over and he's like, do you want to ride up the climb? So he had my bike in the back and he told his wife he'd never pick up girls hitchhiking. <laughs> and he did. 
<laughs> well, she wasn't hitchhiking. That's right. I wasn't hitchhiking. That's right. I was. That's true. Oh, you have little chickens. Oh, oh those are speckled chickens. Goats and the horse. So we came to his house because he was going to swap cars with his wife, and then he said, "Well, you know, if, do I need to get to Winchester?" Interrupted by a beautiful kitty cat. Oh wow, you're super pretty. This is Kelly. I'm just doing a very brief video for my trip. These are their goats on their property. <laughs> and there's a kitty cat, and there's a horse, and there's chickens. Six chickens. <laughs> so they're so generous to invite me here for the night, which is they're supposed to storm tonight, and it's almost going at six o'clock. And okay, this is going to be out. a little dream come true because I love goats. I never get to play with them. And look at you, you look like a miniature pony. Your husband tells the funniest stories when he just talks about you and the animals. It was so cute. <laughs> no, I would have, I would have, I would have brought it closer to your face. <laughs> he says, I know you got it, I can smell it. <laughs> Who's that sleeping in my bed? I don't remember his name. <laughs> he's, he's sleeping with me tonight. <laughs> he's the family dog. I said, I would love to cuddle with him tonight. Are you kidding me? He's such a huge love bug. <sighs> this is surreal. A little stressed about wondering where I was going to be sleeping. Could I make it up the climb? Since I didn't know what the climb would be and the mileage I still needed to go. And it's starting to get dark earlier. 15 minutes later, a truck comes up next to me and that was Ray. And so here I am at dinner, I had a great conversation, I met two awesome people, got to feed goats, see the horse, I have a dog in my bed, I have a bed. It's incredible. It's just incredible. Um, 